better than that. Oh, I can't go on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Truly, I uh, just want to give thanks to the Herman Crest and their, their band, Kingdom Come. Give them a hand, please. Uh, they have been a truly blessing to us this, uh, these two days, and so I truly appreciate them. Uh, I'm going to try not to be long at all. I know you guys are tired. You're not tired? Uh, I'm tired. And, uh, I know if I'm tired, you are tired. Uh, but we are, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I, I just thank uh, Michael and uh, Aaron for the devotion and, and the preparation um, as we try to put this thing together. Give them a hand. This is our first, and this is our first, and I say annual because I want this to be the first of many mm -hmm. uh, new conferences. Uh, there's a lot of things that we need to do to get better, but um, I truly believe those uh, behind the scenes, those in the committee, that uh, helped us out also in uh, this preparation of this youth conference. And I want to thank each one of you for coming out. Uh, who's all been here yesterday and today? Everybody? That's good. I just thank you for coming again this morning. Was the donuts good? Yeah. All right, maybe that's what it was. We fed y'all. Y'all really got tired now. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand real quick. Everyone to stand. Everyone to stand. Everyone to stand. And as you stand, I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles. There's Bibles in the pews there. Turn to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. I just, want to, I just want to get your attention just for a few minutes this morning. Michael, Michael brought a message yesterday talking about the cost of following Jesus. Uh, Psalms 27. And he talked about the cost of following Jesus and how we are to deny ourselves and how that is so important in our walk. Aaron talked about trust. Mm hmm and my prayer that, that, that is that if, if you haven't received Jesus Christ, that you will use this day today as your opportunity to, to give your life to Christ. But there's one thing also that we have to keep in mind that uh, there, is, there are so many battles that we are faced with today. Mm -hmm. And young people, you are faced with some tremendous battles. And so we want to look at that this morning real quick in that Psalms 27 uh, chapter. It says here, starting at verse one, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though hosts should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me, and this where I'll be confident. One thing I have, one thing I have, I desire of the Lord that I will that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in His temple. For in a time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion, in a secret place in His tabernacle, He shall hide me, and set, shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, around about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When they say, Seek ye my face, my heart saith unto thee, Thy face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not my face from me, hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my mother and my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Father God, I just pray now that you would uh, have your way. The Father, you would fill this place with your spirit. The Father, Lord, that you would help me decrease as you would increase in me. That the words that come out of my mouth, Lord, would pierce the heart of 
over here, young people today. Yes. And that, Father Lord, that we can use this time wisely. That we can examine our hearts, search our souls. Lord, that we can get right with you. Mm -hmm. Now, Father Lord, that we can give uh, all our burdens to you this morning. We thank you for everyone here. We thank you for this time that we have. In Jesus' precious Jesus. name. Amen. You can be seated. All right. As I read this text, this familiar text, I couldn't find, I couldn't help myself but to notice that at some point in the writer's life, he found himself in some sort of battle. For if you look at, at verses two, three, and six, mm -hmm. you will see words like enemies and foe and war. You will see phrases like, though a host of camp against me, and though war shall rise against me, all speak of warfare. Mm -hmm. It speaks of a battle being raged against David, who's the writer of this song. I would venture to say that many of you today find yourself in battles of your own. It may appear that David found himself in some desperate, difficult situation. Mm -hmm. But it's clear, as we read in our text, that even in the midst of his battles, David still had hope. I come to you this morning to tell you, though you may be desperate mm. and go into a difficult situation, though you may find yourself overwhelmed by life's battles, mm. troubled by every side, and find there's no way to escape, nowhere to run, and you find yourself, you find yourself wanting to toss in the tide. You want to give up. You want to quit fighting. Mm. I come to tell you this morning, don't give up. Don't give in. I come to tell you that, that I, I want to come to, to rage war this morning. Amen. I want to come to tell you that there is hope in the midst of your battles. Right. There's hope in the midst of your battles. That is the title of my sermon this morning. There's hope in the midst of your battles. Before I go on, I have to ask a question. What are some of the battles that we're facing with today? Hmm. I can think of a few. Uh, this, you know, Mike keeps talking about how old I am. I ain't that old. No, you're not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I might have a little bit of gray hair, but I ain't that old. I, I might be bald, but I ain't that old. My body might be broke down, but I ain't that old. <laughs> I, I, I once was your age, Amen. Amen. And, and and I've done I, I've gone through some of the battles that you you're facing. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Now I will I will I will say that the, the battles that you're facing uh, over the years they have intensified. I've testified they they they've increased. Yeah. I, I would say that. But you're you dealing with battles of peer pressure. Mm -hmm. You're battling with temptation. My skin, y'all battling sexuality, yes. homosexuality. Mm. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Depression, yes. suicidalness. Yes. I was, I was, I was talking with some young girls last week, and they made a comment that um, they made a comment that that, that it seems like some of the people in their school. Feels like it's cool to be gay. Mm. You got to deal with that peer pressure. They, they think that it's it's cool to be gay. My Lord. Hmm. Let me give you some. Let me give you some. Let me give you some stuff here. Hold on. I, I want to wake y'all up a little bit more. I, I, I want y'all to, to know and see exactly what your peers are going through. Not just you, but your friends at school, the, the people at your school, in your community of your age. Mm -hmm. I want to show you what they're going, going through. Suicide. Teen suicide. Mm. 
remains high in the age group of 15 to 24. Each day, there's approximately 12 youth that, su that, that commit suicide. Here it is. Every two hours and five minutes, a person under the age of 25 commits suicide. Mm. Did y'all hear that? Mm. Every two hours and five minutes, a person under the age of 25 commits suicide. And, and they did a study, and it shows that, that those that committed that suicide, that, that it was alarming attempts. They just didn't try one time. It was a constant attempt to try to kill themselves. 9% mm. of students in the grades of 9 through 12 report making an attempt at suicide in the past previous 12 months. Mm. That's a lot of y'all here. Mm -hmm. 9th to 12. Tried to kill himself in the last 12 months. It even gets worse. The age group of 10 to 14. Shows how the rate just increases. Kids trying to take their life. Depression. Among youth, ages 10 and, and older are increasing daily. Over 11% of youth have a depressive disorder by the age of 18. Don't, let, don't, don't get me on drug abuse. Drug abuse? For the old young people that say, I'm just smoking weed. 70% of what y'all call crackheads, call them on crack, cocaine, heroin, 70% started out with smoking weed. Mm. But it's just weed, Rev. It's just weed. It grows out of the earth, Rev. Mm -hmm. 70% drug abuse. They showed in a study that kids fall in these three categories suicide, depression, drug abuse. This is another battle a lot of people don't talk about. The three from their home life. There's some parents that there's some parents that they allow their little ten year olds to drink beer. Some of the young people are smoking weed with their fathers. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Y'all hear me this Come morning? Come on now. Come on. But 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 other than that, your home life, hmm. broken homes, divorce rate in the, in African American, <sighs> split homes. And who's in effect? The young people. Mm -hmm. right. Parents overlooking financial issues. Financial issues in the home. It has nothing to do with you. It has something to do with your parents. But what do they do? They put the pressure on you. Mm -hmm. And you got to deal with it. You know, I, I don't know. I got some financial issues. I, mean, I know sometimes I take it out of my kids. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we take our, our adult frustrations we take it out on you and you have to deal with that. Battles. Mm. Battles. Fear. So many of us have fear. Some of us fear to fail. So we never reach our true potential because we fear to step out. And you have that battle inside your head. I'm talking about battles, y'all. When you talk about warfare, This is what we're facing. Some of y'all young people have to make grown folk decisions. Mm -hmm. Ain't cool. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't even have time to, to, to be a team. Amen. To enjoy the youngness. Come on. Some of y'all gotta grow up before it's time for you to grow up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this has nothing to do with you. You just put in that situation. Battles. Mm -hmm. Battles. But I, I come to tell you, though, there's hope, there's hope mm -hmm. in the midst of your battles. Yes. Right. Second thing before I move on, we, we have to realize, though, who's behind the scenes. Uh -huh. we, we have to realize what it's really all about. We got to realize the big picture. Mm -hmm. 
We, we have to realize who's behind all these attacks. We have to realize, we have to find out. Some of y'all don't get it, but, but we have to know that there's something or someone that's triggering all these attacks against us. Mm. What does the Bible say? He makes it clear. The devil's like a, a warring lion. What is, what is he doing? Seeking. He's seeking mm -hmm. who he may devour. Mm -hmm. The devil is willing. And he sits back and he's just waiting on who he can pray on. He's just waiting on who he can attack. He's waiting on who's home he can attack. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can get you at school. I can get you at home. He sits back and he's just waiting on it. Mm. I think Mike said it yesterday. And I'm going to repeat it again. We don't wrestle against Fresh flesh and blood. blood. Our battles is not between us. Mm. The battle we have to realize is, is against principalities. It's against wickedness, y'all. Yes. It has nothing to do. Your battle with your mom and dad ain't got nothing to do with your mom and dad. Mm. Satan's trying to destroy your home. Yes, he is. Once you deal with peer pressure, all the attacks at school, Satan's behind all of that. Mm -hmm. And see, if you're a believer, it's time as you, as you slowly grow and mature in Christ, you'll start to see his attacks coming. Yep. You will, if you haven't already. But it's Satan who's behind this all. But I don't know about you. But I'm coming here and I'm willing to say that I claim victory over Satan. Amen? Amen. Amen. I come to rage war against Satan. Amen? Amen. I come to rage war against Satan's attacks. Amen. I come to rage war against his scheme. Amen. I come to rage war against Amen. his practices. Amen. Amen. Oh, I need someone who, who's willing to stand up with me and say, I claim victory over Satan. I'm willing that there's someone here that will take a stand with me to say, I put thee underneath my feet. Stay there. You will believe me. I need someone that can sit there and tell the devil, you've already lost. I already won. How can you say it? Because Jesus on the cross and resurrection already won it for us. Y'all better not get me going. Hold on, I gotta right. get back down a little bit. Mm. All right, come on. Hey, we already have the victory. The problem is we don't claim it. Mm -hmm. So many of us young people, we walk defeated. Mm -hmm. We walk like there's no hope. But you do have hope. You have hope in Jesus Christ, Amen. the one that has all power and authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. You got hope in the midst of the battles. Man. Repeat after me. Say devil. Devil. No, 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 no. You, you talk to you. Come on, when y'all want when, when you get oh y'all want to get when y'all want to get 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 it on at school, you don't say you don't just uh, now nah, you gonna say something to him, right? That's right. Yeah. Don't say you gonna say something to him, right? So we say devil. Devil. Say devil. Expectation of something better tomorrow. Uh, 
Martin Luther said, everything that is done in the world is done by hope. The dictionary describes hope like this. He says, to wish for something with expectations of its fulfillment. To expect and desire. Uh, hope from the world's view is just that. The world sees hope as a wish or a desire. Uh, hope for the world is longing for something that may and may not take place. Mm -hmm. But the Bible teaches a different definition of hope. Uh, Jeremiah said, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and Lord. whose hope the Lord is. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul said, and not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations. Knowing that tribulations brings about perseverance. Mm -hmm. And perseverance uh, brings about character. And character brings about hope. Uh -huh. And hope does not disappoint. Okay. Right. The Bible teaches us that hope is a deep, settled confidence that God will keep his promises. Amen. Ooh. The question is do you have hope? Mm -hmm. Do you have hope? Huh, I, I wonder. I wonder if, if one of these statements would describe you. Does your hope disappear if nothing turns out the way you want it to? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think some of y'all, y'all honest, will raise your hand on that one. That, yeah, that, that's me, Rev. Yeah, I, I have hope, but as soon as it doesn't turn out the way I want it to turn out, I, I, I tend to tend to not have hope, y'all. Maybe this is someone. Do you have uh, you have hope, trust, and you wait on the Lord, even if your plans and desires fail? Mm -hmm. How many of us can say that? I wait on the Lord. I have hope and trust, even if my plans fail. I still have hope. I still trust. Amen. It might not be the way I want it. Things, and things are going to happen in your life and, 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 and they're not going to just be perfect. And when you're a Christian, things are just not perfect. Things are going to happen. But you got to have hope that even if something hits me today and hurts me today, I still can persevere. I can still keep moving because of that hope. Uh -huh. Even when things ain't what they supposed to be. You are honest. I wonder which one of those statements defines and describes you. Mm -hmm. Real quick, I want to show you three things, and then, I, and then I'm gonna close. Three things. Y'all, y'all doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Y'all doing a wonderful job. I appreciate it. But just three things. First thing, I want, I want to show us. I want to share with you. Where our hope comes from, mm -hmm. and what hope will accomplish in our lives. Okay, the, the first thing, and, and it's out of that that, that that's 27th uh, book of Psalms. There's three. The first one is our confidence in the Lord provides hope. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Second one is our commitment to the Lord provides hope. And the third one is our comfort in the Lord. Provides hope. Uh, look at me in, 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 in Psalms 27 again. Get your Bibles real quick. Psalms 27. Look, look at these verses, three verses. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and foes, come upon I mean, to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. And this, where I'll be confident. The first, first thing I want to look at is our confidence in the Lord provides hope. Mm -hmm. David began this psalm of hope by declaring his personal faith in the Lord. Notice the three times he says my in verse one. What does he say? He say my, my life, <clears throat> my salvation, and what else? My life. My life. <clears throat> three things <clears throat> that, 
that David mentions here in verse 1. David has a personal relationship with God, and that is the basic foundation of hope. Mm -hmm. right. Hope y'all heard that. A personal relationship. Not a personal religion, mm. okay. but a personal relationship. That's the foundation of hope. David found confidence in the person of the Lord. David tells us God is his light. As light, God delivers his people from darkness. David tells us God is his salvation. As salvation, God delivers people, his people, from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. And then David tells us God is his strength. A strength, God delivers his people from defeat. David had confidence not only in who, who the person of the Lord, but he had confidence in the performance. He had confidence in the performance of the Lord. David declared that his present hope rests upon which the Lord has done for what the Lord has done for him in the past. Mm -hmm. David West, uh, y'all remember the uh, time? <laughs> y'all remember the story, David and Goliath? How mm -hmm. many y'all remember that story? Y'all remember that? This story. Uh, Y'all don't remember to get David the vlog story? Right there? I'm glad you said you didn't say you lift your hands. Now I gotta say it now. Because if you lift your hand, I'm gonna let them know, but I gotta say it now. David, David the little shepherd boy, right? Mm -hmm. The shepherd boy. He goes up against this. I'm gonna do the short version. The, the 2014 version, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, David, you know, they, they, they had these two armies. And the two armies, you know, they, they were scared of this big boy, this big giant. You know, he was tall, nine foot, something like that. He was, he was huge. He was like, like almost like three of me almost, you know? And so David was puny. Like, uh, Gene, stand up real quick. Stand up. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Gene. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's my son. I can do that. Uh, but, but David was, was, was not, David was not like a, a brick house. You know, he wasn't, he was a little boy, you know what I mean? And so everyone else was scared to fight the uh, thing, fight, fight the life. He was scared. They were scared, you know, he feed five foam. Oh, you know, and he, he comes out and he's barking and stuff, and people are running, they're hiding, they don't want nothing up this time. Goliath was the, the old, the old testament bull. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew that word. Yeah, yeah. See the old testament. Y'all got one of them in the school. Y'all got any bullies in the school? Want to be bullies in the school? Yeah. yeah, probably some of y'all bullies right here. Y'all, Amen. Some, some of y'all probably bullies. Right? David wasn't afraid. David wasn't afraid. And, and even so, some of the people said, David, what are you, you a fool? What are you doing? Hey, look at you, look at him. He will kill you. What did David say? David said, the problem is, he come with a sword. All right. mm. David said, he come with a sword. I, I ain't come with a sword. Mm. David said, you see, the problem that I ain't, the reason why I ain't scared, the reason why I have hope okay. is because I know I'm not the one fighting the battle. Yeah. 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 David knew that the battle was not his, and so therefore, David had confidence. Yes. Yes. David walked with confidence. Because he knew the battle was not his, and he knew he had victory. Amen. All right. Y'all, young people, y'all hear me? I hope you're getting this. You have to walk in confidence. Yes. You have to walk as if you already know you yes. have the victory. Yes. Yes. What happened? He took what three smooth stones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he put it in a slingshot, right? Right. Hey, 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 hey. Man, he had to be smooth with it. He, and he, you know, you hit that and then, and then, you know, hit him in the forehead and he's down. Right? Amen. Now, I'll tell you right now. I don't know how good he was with a slingshot, but I know who got it there. there right. Yeah. I know that stone, he, 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 you know, you never know. Goliath might have moved and that stone might have been, because you know, God was guiding me. And if you just allow God to guide you. All right, yes. Oh, God. See? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mike, I keep forgetting it's not Sunday morning. Yes, thank you. All right, all right. 
So, so confidence in the Lord. Confidence in the Lord. What's the second? One? Second one. Second one is commitment. Commitment to the Lord Amen. provides hope. Look at verse. Look at verse four. Look at verse four. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I would seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to require in his temple. Mm -hmm. Not only does living with our faith give us hope, but also living faithful to the Lord provides a measure of hope that cannot otherwise exist. David mentions three goals in this verse. These three goals all rise from a single commitment to serve the Lord Faithfully from a heart of love. Amen. David was committed to be in the Lord's presence at all times. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. He was committed. Folks, young people, you have to be committed to coming to church. Yes. Amen. You got to. And you got to be committed to be in God's presence, not only at church, but in your home too. Amen. It's a daily commitment. You can't have step. See, the problem is that a lot, the reason why a lot of us always get beat up when we're in this battle is because we keep playing games with God. Uh -huh. Can I keep it real? Young people, just because you're young doesn't mean y'all think that, oh, this is just old folk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Old folk, y'all, y'all, look, we're supposed to be young. Y'all do what y'all do. Y'all come, y'all get all serious, wrapped up, yeah, praise the Lord. Y'all do that. We're going. We'll do that later on. Mm. Let, let me break it down for you. I work at Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Been there a month and about a half. Y'all don't want to know what I see. Y'all think Children's Hospital is little four year olds, three year olds, two year olds, little newborns. I tell you the wrong. There's 18, there's 25 year olds in there, there's 22 years olds in there. There's some folks in there going through some stuff you have no clue about. But y'all think y'all got all the time in the world. Man, a young boy, head crushed, mm -hmm. head crushed, sitting in the coma. Sitting in the coma. Don't even know if it's going to come out the coma. What about, what about if you never heard about Jesus? And he never gets the opportunity. If he never comes out the coma, they, they, they decide to take him. Put him plug. Mm -hmm. See, I have to see that. I, ooh, I have to see the little four-year-old boy, five-year-old boy, walk down the hall at four o'clock in the morning with tubes all over him, his hair and parts missing. But he's stepping. He just go. He doesn't even know what's going on in his life. And his mama's behind him just encouraging. Keep going, son. Keep going. But y'all, y'all think y'all got time. Mm. I, I'll, get, I'll get straight with, with church when I'm getting about 21. Mm. That, 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 I'll, get, I'll get straight. I, you know, I always keep it real. You're not, you're not promised to face tomorrow. Amen. You're not even promised here for another hour. Mm. Right. You're not. Jesus can come back anytime now. That's right. Not, there, there's no scare factors. It's just real factors. You can leave here and get an accident. You, ne you never know. That's just the truth. Mm -hmm. David was committed not only in the, in, 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 in the being in the presence of the Lord, but he was committed in worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. David also was uh, expressed his desire to call upon the Lord. He was committed to, to, to true dependence. He depended on the Lord. Young people, you have to depend on the Lord. That's right. You have to depend on the Lord for everything. I'm going to keep going. Third one, our comfort in the Lord provides hope. Mm -hmm. Look at five and six. For in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, around about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices and joy. I will sing yea, I will sing praises 
unto the Lord. Yeah. Our comfort in the Lord provides hope. David shows us that we can find shelter as the battles of life rage against us. The Bible tells us that, that your life is hid with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. There is no safer place than to be tucked into the perfection, to protection of our Heavenly Father. It's amazing that there's a place of solitude in the world filled with people. But there is a place that you and I can find to be free during the crushing battles that rage against us. A place of quiet, a, peace, a place of peace. See, young people, there's a place that's in the presence of God in which the enemy dares not to follow. Mm -hmm. A place reserved for those who truly love God. A place where all else falls away and you are left with him and him alone. Amen. I, I, I truly hope and pray that you would understand that you would not allow these battles to overtake you. Mm -hmm. That you would not allow these battles to destroy you. And this is my prayer, is that you would that, 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 that you would share with your friends. Your friends that might be going through something might just need an encouraging word from you. Mm -hmm. see, see, check this out. Some of your friends, the only hope they got might be the only hope you have in you. Exactly. They don't, they, they don't really know what you know. That's why God connected you with them so you can be that light in their darkness. Mm -hmm. This whole conference was brought about so we can give you some tools to fight your battles in a sense. Give you some encouragement and hope that, that, that you can raise this war because the battle is not going to end. Young people, when you get older, it doesn't, it doesn't end. I, I, I hate to bring you bad news. When you get older, the battles just get bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. There's no way, nowhere to run from. That's why if, if you look at Ephesians, you don't have to turn there, but Ephesians says it all. He says, Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor yes. of God. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God that you can stand. Stand. See, the problem that we have, young people, give, give me your attention. The problem we have is, is, is not that we are supposed to fight. We're supposed to armor up so we can stand. We're not to fight, we're to stand because I already said the battle is not ours. The battle is his. Yes. But to put the armor on means that we have the ability and the power to stand and be able to take anything the devil throws our way. Right, right. Stand yes. against peer pressure. Okay. Stand against drugs and alcohol abuse. Yes. Stand against bulliness. Huh? Stand against depression. Stand against your fears and your failures to be able to stand and take and keep on moving. Having confidence, knowing that your hope, there's hope in the midst of your battles. And I hope you take it with you today. As I close, I'm going to ask the band to come up here, please. I want to give, give, give you an opportunity here. We, I, I truly, truly believe that you're blessed these last two days. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going through. I don't. I don't know what you're going through, but, but God knows what you're going through, and, and God, is, God is here for you. I don't know if there's some problems in your home life that's, that's just a big burden on you. I, I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't I don't know if there's issues at school that's a burden on you. I, I don't know. You know. 
I want to give you an opportunity to release some of these burdens. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you cast all your burdens, he, pretty much he'll carry these burdens for you. You don't have to carry them. You have an opportunity. I'm going to ask everyone